O oh Lord, you are a God of mercy and great blessing. In your love, you have redeemed our souls and have given us the gift of eternal life. Be with us, O oh Lord, in the midst of the struggles and sufferings of this life. Comfort us with your promises. Guide us by your word this morning and bless us with the certainty of your presence as we worship you. The one true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In your name we pray. Amen. We sing our first hymn, number 
confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given thine only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee, and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To them that believe and are baptized, He gives power to become the sons of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. <laughs> Thou, my God, save your servant that trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry unto you daily. Rejoice the soul of your servant. For unto you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, 
ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals which lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Here ends our Old Testament reading. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Hallelujah. fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, he opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Here ends our gospel reading. At this time, we have opportunity to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing our next hymn, number 399.
Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that we'll be considering this morning comes from the Epistle of James, chapter 1, verses 17 to 21. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. <clears throat> so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. So far our text. In the name of our perfect Father in heaven and our precious Savior, Jesus Christ, your fellow redeemed. Every year at the harvest, the children of Israel would take the first fruits of the yield and they would consecrate that to the Lord. Leviticus 23 tells us about the Feast of First Fruits, which was established for Israel whenever they would enter into the promised land. God is the one who allowed the harvest. He's the one who blessed the harvest. And he is the one who provided the providential care that allowed the seeds in the ground to grow up into the wheat and barley and other crops that they grew in that area. The first fruits were literally the first fruits in that very name. There is a beautiful reminder of God's providence as well. That these are only the first because there is far more to come. God would continue to supply the needed food and the needed crops for his children. More was on the way in that regard. And in another regard, there would be even more. James reminds the reader here in our section this morning that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. And he wrote that every good and perfect gift is from God, and it's important to note that, because we're not talking about some gifts or many gifts or most gifts we're talking every good and perfect gift the word there means all and every so israel brought their gifts to god but those gifts were still from god god has given gifts to everyone he's given gifts to all of you here this morning by that perfect life death and resurrection of his son Jesus Christ we've all been given the gift of life none can say that they earned it on their own it was freely given to them and there's no gift that is more perfect than that one that unconditional love that he had for all mankind all mankind who were sinful at that shows that he's an all powerful God gracious merciful and through Jesus Christ who is risen from the dead who is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep as we hear about in 1 Corinthians 15 we are now a part of that harvest that he will reap on the last day it is through Christ that there is more to come and in relation to our text here this morning let us be swift to hear the word that saves. That word that tells us of him. So when James talks about that in this epistle here this morning, he states that of God's own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Christians, by that title, Christian, are followers of Christ. That's what the word Christian means. Christ is 
the first fruits. And the words recorded here, um, in contrast to that, is that James is distinguishing between Christians and other people. The free gift of grace isn't just for Christians. None of us were Christian by our own choice. The free gift of grace was for all people everywhere. Christians are those who were in that same condition, that same boat headed for destruction, but have heard the word of God that creates faith and by the Holy Spirit have that faith in their hearts. So this is no subtle implication here. James is saying that we've been brought forth as a kind of first fruits, but in that respect, there is more to follow. Becoming a Christian is the easiest thing a person can do because there's absolutely nothing that they can do. Believe is the imperative that's used in that regard. It's something that the Holy Spirit does by the hearing of the word. Paul reminds us that it's by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You have been justified freely by Him, by the sacrifice of the first fruits, that is, Jesus Christ, you have been brought into that heavenly harvest. And then how does Ephesians 2 go on there? Verse 10 says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Those good fruits, or the fruits of faith, or good works rather, uh, also uh, the fruits of faith, come from God as well. And it's here that the sinful flesh might start to raise a ruckus because. Now something is expected of us. We are expected to bear that good fruit as Christians. We are part of that vine that springs us out as branches. So James continues in our text here this morning that uh, every man is or every man is to be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. I don't know about the rest of you, but those are three easy enough sounding commands, and yet they somewhat seem to be the hardest ones to follow, at least for me anyway. Who wants to hear what someone else has to say when they're probably wrong anyway, don't want to listen to them? Or who wants to wait to say your piece? And who is slow to wrath when there is so much to be angry about in this world around us? And we're not talking about a righteous anger here, we're talking about being annoyed or getting angry for the wrong reasons. And yet, what does James tell us? It says that the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. But consider also, as a kind of first fruits, which you are, what our gracious and merciful God has done. As sinners, of course, we're selfish and prideful and we only want to be heard for our own sakes we want to get mad not for any righteous reason but because things didn't go our way in sinfulness mankind did not call out to god at no point has anyone realized by their own summation that they were sinful and needed god the natural knowledge of God doesn't take it that far. It takes them as far as their conscience, which can tell them that they did wrong or that they did right. They can know from the world around them that 
there's a God out there, but without that revealed knowledge of God, that knowledge of God we find in the Word that has the ability to save us, they're not going to know who the one true God is. Those who have heard God's Word know it. Many might try to deny it or claim that science disclaims God or disproves them or that humanistic ideas are more important or some other trick of the devil, but that's what they are. They are tricks of the devil. Make no mistake, those who have heard the word know that it is the word of God. And that is the power of the word that has been given to us. The power of the word is the Holy Spirit working through it. So the pertinence of those three commands James writes down are quite clearly seen. Let absolutely nothing stand in the way of that word. Verse 21 goes on. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Dear friends in Christ, don't let anything stand in the way of that word, but you need to take it one step further. Be swift to hear that word that saves. And in hearing, sharing. And in sharing, living. The first fruits that the children of Israel offered at harvest time were not the worst grains that they could find. They were the best. And we, as a kind of first fruits, are not to scrape by and just get by in our relationship with God. Out of that love that He first showed us, our hearts will want to lay aside that pride that is so prevalent in each of us. That wants the world to hear us and instead embrace the ceaseless opportunities to bring in more of a harvest by proclaiming the saving word to others. That word that has the power to save tells us of the first fruits of the resurrection, Jesus Christ. This wasn't some half-baked offering by God. This was the greatest of the greats of the harvest. He was a perfect, innocent man who did everything that we could not. Because we couldn't keep God's good, perfect, and holy will. But Jesus could. And we could not shed enough sacrificial blood of animals to atone for our countless sins. But Jesus could. And the blood of that one sacrifice was more than enough for the sins of the world. We could not come back to life from death. And we certainly couldn't do so in victory. But in his resurrection, Jesus could, and he did. And we could not implant the word that tells us about him into our own hearts, so that it's always with us. But Jesus sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, that he might, and he has. And that word is imprinted upon your hearts now. James says to receive this implanted word with meekness. The love of God is in each of you, for God loves you. And it's not just you that he loves. It's not just a select group of sinners or a certain church body that he loves. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Be swift to hear the word that saves, the word that tells us that. Because we might be under the impression that we cannot do what God wants us to do in our lives, that we cannot live this life of sanctification. And that would be the correct impression that we can't do it, but only if we're looking at it from us, 
doing the work and doing it by ourselves. But Christ is the first fruits. And as the first fruits, there is more to come. The good fruit you produce, the harvest that you bring in, these are not your own. They are the good and perfect gifts of God by what he has given to you. All things are possible. So receive by faith that word that saves you. Be swift to hear it and share it with others. You are a kind of first fruits, the offering which comes from the best of the best. In all that you do, do it to the glory of the Lord, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. His light will guide you in all that you do, and it will guide you always. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. that the Sunday school teachers for this year come forward. Dear friends in Christ, the people here present have been called to serve as teachers in our Sunday school and have signified their willingness to serve. As teachers of our Sunday school, you have a serious responsibility toward God and toward the children of this Sunday school. You are to share in the ministry of the word by instructing the lambs and the flock of Jesus Christ. To equip yourselves for this important task, it's necessary that you apply yourselves to a diligent study of God's holy word, to devote yourselves in prayer and intercession, of those who are committed to your care to live a Christian life and thus be an example that will prompt others to walk in the fear of the Lord. You are assuming a serious responsibility, but the Lord has promised to be with each one of you and to supply the gifts that are required for the faithful performance of your duty. As pastor of this congregation, I now ask you before God, are you willing and ready to accept this responsibility 
and to do your work faithfully according to the ability which God gives you? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, yes with, with the help, help of God. God. Upon this your solemn promise, I declare you, teachers of Berea Evangelical Lutheran Sunday School, and authorize you to share in the work into which you've been called in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God grant you his Holy Spirit and give you wisdom and strength to fulfill your task to his glory and for the spiritual and eternal welfare of souls. Let us all pray. Gracious Savior, who has said, Suffer the little children to come to me and do not forbid them. Regard with your favor every effort to bring up children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Give wisdom and discretion, kindness and perseverance to all who conduct schools for the instruction of the young. <coughs> teach them, O Lord, that they may teach others. Grant that the children of our congregation in Sunday school may receive with a humble, teachable, and ready mind all instruction given to them according to your word. Give them your grace while they are young, that early in seeking you early they may find you. May they remember their Creator in the days of their youth. Teach them to honor their parents and superiors and to be kind and full of love towards one another. Grant that all of them may be trained in the way which they should go, and when they are old, never depart from it. May the knowledge of the Lord be spread abroad, that all may know you, and that they, from the least to the greatest, may praise you now and forever. Amen. May we turn to your seats. Please rise for our prayer of the church. O oh, Holy Spirit, we humbly thank you that you made the gospel of salvation known to us and through it brought us to faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Let nothing please us more than the assurance that we are born again children of God and heirs of eternal life. Let nothing greater, let nothing give us greater joy and satisfaction than knowing that our sins are forgiven. Divine Counselor, bestow your grace continually upon us that we may have the will to resist all temptations to sin and the power to overcome all attacks made upon our faith. Guide us daily along the path of godliness and compel us by our love for Christ to fill our lives with all manner of good works. Help us to love our neighbor as ourselves, to deal honestly and fairly with him, to be patient and kind and forgiving toward them, and to help them in their hour of need. Guard our lips from sinful speech, our hearts from lust, and our minds from malicious thoughts. Center our lives in God and above all things. Help our hearts to desire his great love and mercy, which is already ours through Christ. Make us willing to suffer the loss of all things, even death, rather than fall away from our Savior. Spirit of truth, we confess that we often neglect your divine word. All too easily we allow worldly matters to keep us from reading and studying scripture for ourselves. Help us remedy this spiritual weakness and to include at least some study of your word in our daily schedules. And as we read and meditate, grant us spiritual growth and blessings according to your promise. Do not permit us to be discouraged by the wickedness of this present evil world. Help us to await with longing hearts the return of our Savior, who will take us to himself in heaven. Reveal the treasure of the gospel to our hearts of sinners everywhere, and turn them from their sins and unbelief to Christ. It's in his name that we make all these and all requests. And it's also in his name that we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
ears were paying attention to the words of that last hymn. Mm -hmm. Probably sounds really familiar. Mm -hmm. Uh, say, first of all, thank you, like huge thank you to everyone who helped out with this last week. Uh, seemed to go by quick there in the week itself, but uh, all your preparation, uh, housing everybody, providing the meals, uh, thank you very much. They also wanted to extend their thanks to each of you, um, and can't reiterate that enough. Thank you. Uh, next weekend, I'm going to be in Mapleton and Ponsford for their mission festival. You're going to have a late service here. Um, already talking to someone about that. So Sunday school is going to go on as usual. Bible class, you're free to come here if you'd like. Uh, I'll probably put something here if you want to read it, but there's not going to be a class per se. Uh, then, last thing, uh, Bria's Mission Festival, that's going to be less than a month now. Uh, today's the 12th, so October 10. Uh, Pastor Richard Konzenbach, who was here for the communion service, he's going to be our speaker once again. So, uh, practice that hymn at home with your kids. And looks like a potluck is scheduled to follow that. Uh, also under the Synod News, there's a CLC Southeastern Women's Retreat. I think the cutoff date for that's in October. I don't think they put that in the announcement, uh, but they have to register for that before October if you're going to uh, be involved in that. Any announcements? Any birthdays? Yes, Greg. Uh, no birthdays, but... I was thinking of that passage in Philippians. Paul says, I'm sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus our Lord. And we see the work from seed to harvest. Um, and that's why I thought it better to say, instead of words which thou thy shalt, self shalt in me must prevail. I changed that to words which thou thyself shalt give me shall prevail because they will. And our dearest true vine bridegroom Jesus has never failed us, will, is not failing us now and never will in the future. That's absolutely correct. Also, I forgot to mention confirmation starts this week. We need to sing happy birthday to you because you're going to be gone next week for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to sneak off before some of <laughs> <laughs> yeah.